Hello, everything, everyone. Um, my name is Jose, Jose Liendro. Um, this is an OTT about um, Elastic APM and Nest JS. And these are like my conclusions from the last week setting up these, uh, these components. Um, well, so uh, first of all, uh, we are, uh, I am working uh, at Wiprom as a software engineer. And in this uh, in these times, we want to share some knowledge about the, this kind of experience and research that we are doing about new technologies. Um, so this is uh, where these tools come from. So we have this this channel uh, in in YouTube where you can subscribe and see all the all this con kind of content that we share, like we in a weekly base. So please take a look on, on those videos and subscribe if you like it and give us uh, some uh, thumb up. So um, moving forward, um, this is not the first time I, I'm talking about these technologies. Um, the first time was uh, like uh, some month ago about ELK, APM and BITS. Uh, so here I left some a link to the previous, previous recording. Uh, where I talk about the like the general topology and how how this um, kind of technology can work all together. In this time, I will be focusing on the APM. Um, we were not using the bit, and as well, we are not using this L because we are using uh, we will use Elasticsearch, Kibana, and APM. So that is one difference from the previous presentation. And as well, at that time, we will use uh, we we use it the Python agent to with a Django application, and right now we will change and use a different agent with Node.js. So the um, what we are that the focus the, the main core here is to at, at least for me these last days was to enable the APM for a project that I am working on. And the project, uh, it uses Node.js language. Uh, it has Node.js, um, Prisma as, as OEM. Uh, we have a couple of APIs in REST and GraphQL. And I want to know, to me, it's like uh, I have some month of experience in these new technologies. And I want to know how they perform in terms of and the access of into the database and as well to have some more insight about how all the, the components are interrelated. Because of that, I want to enable the APM. Uh, the APM, what it means is like an application performance monitoring. I, I found that the M could be monitoring, management or metrics. Uh, the idea is to, to have like metrics to understand the, the application. Uh, it's very useful when we are almost if we don't have like logs, uh, this kind of agent will live in our application, typically into the in, into a middleware and like inspecting everything, uh, and then put it all together in information to this kind of pretty dashboard where we can review a lot of a lot of things. Um, there are several types of APMs. What we are what that we will see right now it's the Elastic APM. As well, we have other options. We can use Sentry. I am not familiar with AWS X-Ray, but as far as I can see, they have like, like a very similar uh, behavior. So this is like the general scope um, about the APM. As I mentioned uh, in the previous presentation, we, have, we were um, uh, using the APM agent for Python. And at that time we are using Django REST a REST API and we were using Django OREM and in this time we will use uh, Nest JS Node um, REST GraphQL uh, we will use Prisma uh, as an OREM and um, and then we have Postgres and um, so the agent in this time is the APM Node and the version is like the version three and here at least these are the last. Uh, the last version from both agent and the Python one uh, is like more, uh, it has more iterations. And I saw that there have a lot of 
features that the APM node doesn't have yet out of the box. So uh, it's interesting when you get into the Elastic doc documentation that it's pretty big. We can arrive to a section here where we can see all the technology that they support the this agent. And as you can see, it has it's it's nice how they manage like the version about uh, the language that they they can support. And as well, in this particular, is is this is for Node, and they here have we have a list about all the frameworks that they are integrated and as well um, and this kind of uh, GraphQL, for example, Express from GraphQL, uh, all these modules are as well uh, linked to, to the agent. So it, it can uh, inspect them and extract information. So um, it's very nice. We, we, we can inspect uh, different kind of, of agents. So what the what this topology looks like and how can we how can we install and enable these features in our applications? Uh, on the left side we have uh, our applications, servers, containers, or whatever we have where, where we have the our project. And then we have the stack. Uh, the basic is, is the the database that is Elasticsearch. Then we have the APM server and Kibana it will be an interface to, to arrive and see the, all the dashboards. Um, we can have all these components in different servers sections. So we have different types of configurations. Uh, we can enable SSL, authentication, and et cetera. And as well, we can have for each of these components to, to set it, setting up as, as a cluster. So on the left side, we have the agents. In the past, as we saw, uh, we were using the Python agent, but now we will start using the, the node. And they implement an open telemetry protocol uh, where they extract information. I just mentioned this because we will then come back when we are analyzing the, the results of the, of the experience. So everything is good. So what I did this, these days. So we have here uh, the project where I was working, when I am working, the NestJS. Um, and then what I, what I need to enable to, what we need to enable to have the APM is also to enable Elasticsearch and Kibana. So in these examples that we will see, we will see a couple of containers. Um, we have like two, to to project the project itself with our application and then we have um, a new a new setup with Elasticsearch, Kibana, and I added the APM. Um, I mentioned this uh, also because here this example it runs in my local computer. I have an M M1 machine that has a, an REM uh, design in their chip, um, so I I need to. Um, I need to, um, I had some issues with some of the, of the images. It's, it was not so straightforward. So to configure like Elasticsearch and Kibana. So I arrived to this, uh, um, this node and here it, it offer uh, uh, a Docker compose that it use the Elasticsearch official image and as well the Kibana. So it's pretty, pretty easy, easy to, to follow up and use. So I just copy paste this configuration um, and enable Elasticsearch and Kibana. And what I did was to also include to, to this uh, configuration the, the APM. So that is what we have and as well, uh, what we what I did is to disable all the XPAC security. So all these components, they are connecting uh, without uh, SSL protocol or authentication layer. They are connecting like uh, without, without that. It's just to simplify the project. So you just run Docker Compose and just uh, runs. And then in the project, what I did to, to enable the, the agent, 
was to install first, I used um, the agent that we saw previously here, um, the one that has version three, this one, um, it's the ones um, attached to this, this one, the Elastic APM node. And also today we have available um, a module, a node module that has this NetsJS Elastic APM and that, um, that it has the integration for, for Nest. So in order to include the, um, the agent to, to the project, we need to install the Nest.js and then add a, a middleware or a new, yes, like a, a middleware. Um, so we need to import this app APM module and register uh, into our application. Something similar uh, um, was the configuration about the Python agent. So once I, I just run the, the container in this way I, I, I mentioned, I, I got these this kind of screens um, accessing to the, to the APM through Kibana. So here we, we are seeing like the typical dashboard about or an application or an instance of an application where we can see the throughputs, uh, we can see error that we have in our application, the latency, we have all this statistical information and we have all the transactions. And as well, if we are like click on each of these transaction, we are seeing like the distribution, how they, they work in general, sorry. Um, I'm not sure if you are listening to some background noise right now. If not, I will continue. Sorry no, about no, that. No, that's fine. Yep. Ah, perfect. Thank you. Um, well, so and on the right side, we have here the, the a, a transaction itself. In this case, for example, if you remember, I mentioned that we have a GraphQL API. So we have here the, the transaction for, for, for Pro GraphQL, uh, where we have all together all the transactions that we can study to understand um, how they how they fast, let's say they are. So for example, here in this particular transaction that it's it's on, on the bottom of the screen, it took like 9.2 milliseconds to, to retrieve data. The, but we can see in this uh, distribu distribution diagram that the, in general, the most uh, are around like 20 or 30 milliseconds in these examples. And as you can see in the tail of the histogram, we have like the worst case and the better. So when we are studying what is going on, what, what is going wrong with our integration, we can just study the tails and see what is happening here, there. Um, so without doing so much effort, we have uh, all this data, um, but as well, I, I found <clears throat> that there are some limitations. Um, as you can see, for example, in these transactions, uh, we are seeing like the GraphQL endpoint is like uh, the only one that I found. I tried to make like different requests. Uh, in GraphQL, we have resolvers and we have a ju just one single endpoint where we can send like multiple queries um, that can be queries or mutations. And, but I tried different uh, to create different entities, but I was, I, I received like just one single endpoint and it's like not so useful to, to study. So uh, I, I just uh, doing a, a kind of research about that. And today we have some, some limits we need to enable in NestJS, we need to, to wrap up the way that GraphQL works so we can uh, track the, the name of the queries that we are doing in order to get them here in, in different uh, roles. For example, uh, create a device or create an entity or delete something or whatever. So that is one thing that doesn't work out of the box as for example, the Python agent. And as well, we, because we are using like Prisma OREM, we have some limits uh, because when I click on the transactions, here I cannot see the, the results, uh, in particular, the number of access to, to the database that, that uh, was one of my main goal here. 
and that as well is because uh, we don't have like today like like a out of the box uh, integration for for Prisma, but at the same time, the Prisma has an open telemetry implementation, and uh, I think in the same day, way that we can customize the way that GraphQL works to get the name of the query to put it here as a different tra transaction, we can do the same for for Prisma, but and uh, doesn't doesn't uh, work like for free, let's say, out, out of the box. I need, uh, we need to, to enable on our side some customizations to have that uh, information. So uh, what I can also show to you is the way, let me see here. Um, I want to just uh, show you what is the, what it looks like the project uh, that I mentioned that has these three containers. Uh, in the example, we are using um, Docker Compose. So as you can see, we have like three three main containers and the APM itself, Kibana and Elasticsearch with just one single node. And all this description, you can find it into the uh, document I found from Medium. And it using it is using like the official uh, images from, from Elasticsearch. It has a lot uh, these two, and I include to that example the the APM. Um, so what I did is to create a folder and create a local file for the APM. I used like the same version. That kind of thing is important when we are working in on the stack uh, to has have the same uh, version that Elasticsearch and Kibana, and then I, when we are doing like customization, all these uh, components use, they use uh, YAML files to set up um, each of, of the, the, these items. So um, in this uh, in this case for, for the APM, it's just pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, APM, each of these service uh, runs in a different, creates like, a, a socket and has uh, had like different ports to, to run. These are the defaults. Uh, APM works in in these 8,200 ports. And as I mentioned, I disabled the Xbox security. So it's like the configuration is pretty straightforward. And as well, we don't use SSL. Uh, we need to hit to Kibana. So uh, in this case, because we are using containers, we just Put the name of the service. Kibana is running on in this port, and we are have enabled Kibana, and we disable SSL. And then, as well, the APM needs to connect to Elasticsearch. And as you, if you remember, we we have the service name at node zero one in the port nine thousand two hundred, and that's it. We don't have like we didn't create users. We don't have any of that configuration that could be like more, uh, it will take, of course, more, more time to do. But I just mentioned this because uh, if we want to, to use it, we just run Docker Compose app build. I am using an M1 machine and run, runs pretty pretty fine. Even if the some of these images uh, currently are running in AMD architecture. Just to... Let me see if I can show you somewhere. Um, here, this is how it looks in Docker desktop. Uh, let's see. Well, here I have like the two main projects. Not sure why I, I could not increase. Oh, okay. These are the two projects that we are running. Um, we have here uh, uh, all projects that we are we want to track, and then we have the this other instance that has the Kibana node in APM. And as you can see, I'm running on an ARM uh, machine, but uh, we are using AMD. And um, I just shared this because they work fine. It's 
work pretty fast. Uh, but on the other hand, it's um, uh, Elasticsearch. It has already the ARM version. I just didn't find time to 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 the experience, but they also have the that that configuration. I just show this because um, even even though you have a different computer, um, I, I imagine you you don't you don't find time you don't find any issue running the project. So um, all the the box regarding the ELK is written in these three files. We have the project. We have the this Docker compose. We have um, set up for the APM um, and and a definition for a container that the only thing that it does is to uh, put the YAML file into the into the container. And then I just don't don't show uh, I will not show the the details about the project I am I am working on, but believe me, I just installed the the node agent and and on the middleware. And that's that's uh, that's it. So here I can show you how it looks uh, when you open the the project. You will see. Let me share also this. Um, on the left side, I have the Yoka logs. So you will see probably you you. You are you cannot read anything, but we have like the three containers running with their, their logs, and so you can see um, at the beginning there are some race race conditions because uh, the APM needs the the Elasticsearch and Kibana uh, needs the APM, so it takes takes a time to they stabilize and and start uh, running properly. But it's just a matter of time. Of time, you don't need to configure anything else. So to get into to the project, uh, what we need to do is to get into Kibana. So if you remember, we have the um, port five six zero one, uh, where we can access to to Kibana, and then we can go click here and go to APM, and we will arrive here. Uh, to the dashboard. Then we need to increase the the time, the the time frame where we want to to inspect data, and and we can see the the name of the application that we define in our agent. In this case, I put nest nest a, a nest up, and I have having running for like two days, I think. So we can set, for example, to change the the time frame, and you will see pretty pretty fast how they can they change like this information about our our instance. And when you click in the app, you will arrive to the main dashboard, and you can see uh, all the information that we were talking. Um, and as well, uh, I was working this week, and so it's it's good to to also see. Uh, where we can see the errors, the amount of time they, they happen. And when we click in any error, we apply to the stack. And then we when we arrive to, to the stack, we can inspect the, the code. And it's pretty useful. We can see uh, different kind of metrics about the project for free. And and see if, if we are connecting to to a real server here, it this the the throughput and the latency will be very helpful to understand the health of the project. And also, it's interesting how they mentioned the dependency of our application. In our case, I didn't uh, define anything, any de detail about what we are doing in our app, but it has it have has different um, dependencies to external services that we have. And also we have metrics about those services. So uh, we can understand and see, well, <laughs> in this case, we are the, the most uh, consuming time comes from in the way that we are accessing to AWS services, for example. Um, 
And here as well, we can have a list of the containers that we have. In case the container restart, we will see all the instances of the containers and the history. And if, for example, if we restart our containers, we will see that the previous one and the new one here uh, with its own metrics. Well, so, um, so far, so good. Mm, this is the GraphQL um, endpoint that I, that I was I was talking. And so I plan and I imagine that if I can can invest more time, um, I can wrap, uh, I can uh, split this uh, this endpoint to have like more useful information for our GraphQL uh, endpoint. And I think that's that's it. That is that was the experience I did I did these days. Um, I feel uh, good because um, if you want to run this this project, it's pretty is uh, fast. It's very powerful. You just need to plug this in, this stack to your application. You can just find for the agent that you need or to to plug into your project, and you will have like all this information. Um, once we start working in in a project we used to don't we used to don't have like infrastructure and we don't have metrics and we don't have feedback or we don't have enough logs and this kind of middleware helps a lot to understand how it works and where are the problems and so and uh, this is the end and Someone has any question or wants to share something? It's not exactly a question. It's about I am I'm already thinking on how to implement this on my Python projects, and and I would like to reach you <laughs> in the future, sure. in the near future, to to have a a better understanding on on how to connect everything. I think the good thing, yes, of course, you, you can you can reach me. Um, I think for you in your case, you will have like a most uh, bigger uh, bigger uh, results because uh, you will have like out of the box a lot of things that uh, the agent implements. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, the Python agent is more mature, and we have like a lot of a lot of features that doesn't we don't have right now in, in Node.js. Um, and just to, if I will wait for any other question. And in the meantime, um, I will just thank to answer the question to, to Matthias. And this is the Python agent. And you, you will see, for example, uh, how can you set up the agent? And you will see a list of frameworks that you have enabled to, to, for, for Python. And then you can click on each of them. Uh, I'm not sure if, if one of these works for you. What is the framework that you are using? AWS Lambda. Okay. So we can go here and just follow up the configuration. Of course. And that's that's it then all the results will just work perfect perfect thank you jose sure no problem well guys if uh, let me i will chat this uh, well i'm not sure where is the chat i will put it in the ott channel uh, well guys if you don't have any other question uh, i think uh, we will stop the, the meeting thanks for sharing
Well, thank you very much. You, See you soon. Bye bye. Thank you, yeah. Jose. Bye, guys. Have a nice weekend. You too.